one number to be normal and the other one to be like high or low? Like, I don't know. So, so the blood, the, they're taken at different times, right? One is taken when the heart is beating and pushing forward. Oh, yeah. And another is taken when, when the heart is relaxing, all right? So, so the two numbers are not necessarily directly connected to each other. One, again, is the pressure that, that the heart generates against your blood vessels, against that, that, that garden hose wall when the heart is pumping. And another is when the heart is relaxing. So it's something that we definitely see, yes? So when the um, thing is being contract, contracted to our arm, that's the system. So the first, the first one, right, when, you, when we, we blow that cup up, so no blood is, is going through the, the vessel at all. So when I put the, when I listen, no blood is flowing. When I let it go down, I hear a beat. At that beat is every time my heart beats, I actually a little shot of blood get is able to go through because it can now overcome the pressure of the cup. But when the heart is relaxing, the cup no blood is flowing. Then when I lose the beat, that means blood is flowing all the time, and that's how we get the blood pressure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, what numbers show that you have hypotension? Hypotension. So that's another another uh, thing altogether. And I tell my patients, everybody's so worried about low blood pressure, when in reality, um, low blood pressure is much less of a problem. So hypotension, as we talked about, what the importance of the heart and the blood pressure is to do is to perfuse your vital organs. One of the most important being your brain. So I tell people there is really no such thing as, as hypotension unless you feel lightheaded or dizzy or pass out, okay? So I can tell you that, that really highly trained athletes like Lance Armstrong, he probably walks around with a heart rate very, very slow. His resting heart rate is in the 40s, which is, is, is really, really low. Everybody in this room probably has resting heart rates in the 60s. Me being older is probably somewhere in the, in the, in the 70s. But Trained athletes can walk around with very, very low blood pressure, and his his systolic blood pressure is probably if we were to take it's probably somewhere in the in the 90s. For the, but he's used to that. If I were to take somebody who's elderly and, and they were having the blood pressure in the 90s, they might not be able to perfuse their brain with that kind of pressure, and they might feel lightheaded and dizzy. So when it comes to hypotension, it's really we look at what the symptoms are. Are they perfusing their their, their brain? Are they lightheaded and dizzy? Other organs that we check, we can do blood tests to see whether they're making urine and their kidneys are getting perfused and other things. So I'm less worried about hypotension as I am about hypertension, which is a, a significant epidemic. All right, risk factors. We talk about the organ systems, right? Yes. Let's talk about some of the risk factors. Anybody want to name some risk factors for the development of high blood pressure? Sure. <laughs> So it can cause, well, it, it, diabetes, let me put it this way. Diabetes is not, it, 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 it can have a risk factor for developing high blood pressure, yes. And they oftentimes run run very close together, all right? Um, but but it's not as, spe as specific a, a risk factor for high blood pressure. Diabetes most certainly is a risk factor for developing cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, which is the plaque build up in the arteries and other things. So, I'll give you a, a borderline for diabetes. Anybody else? Go ahead. You said what's the worst factor? Yep. Fast food. What do you say? Fast food. Fast food. So, so right, eating eating high cholesterol, high fat, high I salt so. diet. I thought you were asking what it can cause. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Yep. Genetics. So genetics. Very good. Very good. Anybody else? Sure. Lack of exercise. Lack of exercise. Sure. Sure. What else? Anybody else? Habits. So eating habits. Somebody yeah. touched on that, right? So you guys are you guys are hitting them. That's good. So somebody said genetics. I'm glad somebody said genetics. There are certain risk factors that we can't control. Okay. So so obviously we have no control, although we wish we did at times, of who our parents are, who our brothers and sisters are, aunts and uncles, and etc. Okay. So we cannot control our family history. So if your grandma or your mom or dad, brother, sister, aunt or uncle has high blood pressure, you are at increased risk of developing high blood pressure. Now high blood pressure is very, very common in the minority community, specifically in the African American community. So I venture to say that vast majority of us have some family history of high blood pressure. 
Um, advanced age, obviously you can't stop the clock, although I wish I, I could stop the clock. Um, but as we get older, we develop the blood vessels, as I told you, get stiffer and are less compliant, and so we naturally develop, have a tendency to develop high blood pressure. And then obviously there's also gender. We can't control the gender we are, but males tend to have higher blood pressure or develop more severe high blood pressure than, than females do. Why is that? It has to do with, with hormones, primarily. Um, but as they get older, the differences tend to balance out. Um, so, uh, this says lack of physical activity. Somebody hit, hit on that. Um, uh, poor diet, especially a diet um, high in salt. Um, so I told you about the sodium issue and the osmosis and, and eating potato chips and things like that. That's definitely uh, something to, to watch. Being overweight and o obese. More, more uh, uh, body tissue that the heart has to pump through. Um, and essentially, if, uh, a lot of my patients who come in who are overweight and obese, I say, listen, if you lose 5, 10 pounds, well, you don't need this blood pressure medication. So certainly, uh, being active, watching what you eat, and, and um, watching your weight is very, very important. Too much alcohol. Drinking a lot of alcohol, which, which, which is not a problem for, for here, but, but we need to watch what we drink, because um, drinking too much can lead to, high, to lead to high blood pressure. Smoking. Smoking. All right? I'm going to make my plea now. Smoking uh, beyond cardiovascular disease is the number one preventable cause of death in the world. The number one cause of preventable death. Preventable meaning that if those people didn't smoke, they didn't have to die. So, I'm pleading to you now, if you smoke, which hopefully none of you do, stop. And if, if, you, if, if you're ever offered a thought of it, don't start. And if you know family members who do, get them to stop. All right? That's going to be my one plea. But smoking, the number one preventable cause is this. It's a significant problem. You're killing yourself if you do it. Okay. Stress. And I had some, some cool pictures, and maybe I, I, I'll, I'll bring this, this, this around uh, uh, to, to, show, to show some of you guys um, of, of some of these things. So, so we talked about smoking, we talked about, about stress. What? This, this picture here is a kid sitting down on the sofa called the killer sofa. Um, he's sitting down playing, playing his Nintendo and things, and this is becoming... A, a real, real epidemic um, because kids aren't running around doing stuff, playing sports, being outside. They're inside watching video games and, and whatnot. Now, certainly the Wii is is uh, definitely um, improved this, but it's still not the same as getting outside and getting some exercise. Um, obviously, the McDonald's diet. I got a picture of, of some cigarettes and and uh, Bob the Cat, who's stressed, who you guys probably don't know who that is, but also um, uh, watching um, your weight. Stress is one of those things that, that is kind of a soft risk factor, but certainly as we're stressed transiently can lead to, to, to high blood pressure. Yes, absolutely. Now, compared to the other ones you said, it's not like pretty much of a problem, but how does stress, like, regulate higher pressure. So, 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 um, and we can touch on, we'll touch on in a second when we talk about some of the things that can cause high blood pressure. But um, stress is one of those reflexes, have I heard of fight or flight, yeah. right? So when you were a caveman and the saber-toothed tiger came to, to jump after you, you, initially your reaction was either to fight or to run. Okay, and that is is engineered in us um, through hormones and other systems. One of the main hormones being adrenaline. All right, and so obviously, when that saber-toothed tiger jumps out, you want your pressure to go up so you are able to perfuse the vital organs of your body, or more importantly, perfuse the muscles of your body, so that you can run, get out of there. Right. So that's essentially the genesis of why stress leads to elevated blood pressure. Now clearly, we don't have saber-toothed tigers. We have midterm exams, finals, important basketball games, etc. 
which is a little bit different, but still the body adapts differently, and it's the same idea. Okay? Yeah. Question. I don't have a question about adrenaline. Like, how does it make you stronger? Like, you know how you like you get that. You get so it's it's a sensation, um, and the details of it we, we won't go into to to here because it's not as important with the high blood pressure. But but essentially the adrenaline allows and increases the force of contraction of your muscles, including your heart muscles. And that's why the blood pressure rises. So it does actually make you stronger. It, a uh, for a short period of time it can. It can. Yeah. So say with the fire fire flight thing, say yep. say with the tiger did come after you with no adrenaline rush, could that be like a heart defect or something? Um the, probably let so certainly there's probably a lot of reasons why people uh, the saber tooth tiger got the caveman. But um, uh, less of a, certainly you could have a heart problem. The adrenaline issue is, is more of a, the brain, we talked about some of these things, the brain releasing things into the bloodstream that then uh, cause the nerves to, to release adrenaline, cause organs that sit above our kidney to release adrenaline. So that axis is more of a brain axis and the response is from the heart. Okay, so the heart does not necessarily initiate that. You see the tiger, that visual thing goes to your brain. Your brain says, you know what, I need to get out of here. Your brain releases enzymes or, or factors, hormones, uh, activates nerves that then hit your kidneys, hit your heart, cause your heart rate to go up, that cause your blood pressure to go up, etc. So the heart is more of a responsive factor in that. All right. Um, so we talked about some of the risk factors. Let's talk about some of the causes of blood pressure, okay? We can break blood, high blood pressure into two main causes, all right, or, or how we define it um, as physicians. Into essential hypertension, or what we call primary hypertension, or secondary hypertension, okay? And primary hypertension, or essential hypertension, is are the vast majority of cases, 90 to 95% of patients who develop high blood pressure, we don't know why, and that's why we call it primary. There's no medical cause that can be found. Now, honestly, that number may be a little bit lower. My colleagues um, uh, and, and physicians don't always spend a lot of time looking for secondary causes, so I suspect if we looked even harder that we could find other causes. But the reality is, is the take home point of this, is that vast majority of people who develop high, high blood pressure have what we call essential hypertension, and that essentially means there's no known real clear cause. But there is a smaller group that develops secondary hypertension, and that there is a clear underlying reversible cause as to what we can, can do that. And some of those are diseases like kidney disease. So if your kidneys are, aren't functioning, told you the kidneys are important uh, organs in regulating blood pressure. So if your kidneys aren't handling so salt very well or sodium very well, you can run into problems if they're starting to fail and aren't regulating your volume very well, meaning that, that, that you're not urinating or making urine and you're holding on to that volume, that will result in high blood pressure as well. You can have certain tumors. So adrenal adenoma, and I had a, had a picture over here of what that is, adrenal glands sit over top of your kidneys. I'll give you a second. So, um, sit over top of your kidneys and release this adrenaline, and those sometimes can, can a tumor can form there. So instead of the flight or flight ref, uh, um, reflex that happens every now and then, that person is always releasing adrenaline, so their blood pressure is always up. Um, and a pheochromocytoma is another type of cancer or, or tumor that can release these hormones that leads to high, high blood pressure. Like you said, with kidney uh, diseases, so with a person that needs dialysis, we don't get it. That that lead to a, it can. It certainly can. It certainly can lead to high blood pressure, and certainly uh, um, uh, people who have kidney disease are at increased risk of, of developing issues with with blockages in their arteries and other things too. Um, so then another one that many people don't think about are sleep disturbances. All right. So how many people know somebody who snores? Um, uh, uh, my, my father used to snore and you could hear him two houses over. Um, uh, what this is is what we call obstructive sleep apnea. So what happens is when people snore, when you're awake, 
you are, um, your nerves, you're able to maintain the tension in